Hey again, it's Christina from Sunshine and Flora. So this is part two of my 2024 garden plan. If you saw the first video, you saw me go over all of my in-ground plantings. In this video, I want to share with you guys my hoop house plans. And I split this for a couple different reasons. One, if I included this in the first video, it probably would get entirely too long. Um, and two, Planting in a hoop house is definitely different than planting in ground. And so I wanted to be able to talk about this separate because I have uh, succession plantings planned just because I'll be doing an early spring harvest and then uh, planting for summer in there. So I have a diagram on my computer next to me. I'm going to be putting this up on the screen for you guys to see. Uh, here is a picture of my hoop house from last year. I purchased this from Grower Solution, an amazing company. I absolutely love this hoop house. Uh, it's their low sidewall greenhouse. I always just call it a hoop house. It's a 16 by 28 in size. It has the roll up sides, um, the door on the front. It was super easy to put up. I absolutely love it. I would have like 10 of these if I had the space. Uh, I thought the price was reasonable. And it, I just can't say enough good things about it. I will link their website down below. If anyone is interested in putting up a structure, I highly recommend these. So um, I will link this, the one that I have down below, but definitely check it out. Uh, spring is the perfect time to put one up, by the way. So anyway, uh, I'm just going to dive right in and share with you my plan for this year. So here is my diagram for 2024. You can see I have three planting areas and then the gray stripes are the walking spaces. The walking spaces are two foot wide. Again, this is a 16 by 28. And so I have three uh, five foot wide beds and then two two foot, or excuse me, the middle one is five foot. The ones on the outside are four foot and then the two foot walking paths. So down the middle, is not covered with landscape fabric. That is open area with, um, with the topsoil. That is where all of my spring ranunculus and anemones are going. You, if you watch my videos, you saw that I just started pre-sprouting those. I'm seeing a little bit of action, so I'm really excited. Uh, but I have so many ranunculus and anemones to plant. So that entire middle bed is going to be planted with all of those. Uh, probably at about a four inch, three or four inch spacing. I'm going to pack them in there. Now this area, ranunculus and anemones, um, ranunculus in particular, I think, they will stop producing when your temperatures hit 70 degrees, um, maybe a little bit cooler. They are a very cool season flower. My goal is to get these planted in the hoop house March 1st or a little bit after so they can start rooting in and, and establishing in the cool temperatures and then really putting on some growth because uh, I think my harvest is going to be daffodils, tulips, ranunculus. Um, and then after that, when it starts getting warm, they will stop producing. So once they stop producing and I'm able to collect those corms out of that bed, I will save them for next year. And then this bed is going to be replanted with summer crops. Now, because I am not exactly sure when I'm going to be clearing those corms out of the bed, because they do need to die back somewhat to give uh, energy to next year's growth, I am going to be direct sowing this entire area. So here is a list of the things that I'm going to be planting in there. And I will throw this back up on the screen. These are all pretty much fillers. I'm going to do cress, multiple varieties, uh, the Covent Garden Baby's Breath, Orlea, Dara, Ami, Bupleurum, a silver tip grass, and the copper plume atriplex. I'm hoping to just have a nice, full, established area of fillers that I can cut for the rest of the season. Now, I don't know if that's making best use of the hoop house situation because they say put your best things in the hoop house, um, but that's what I'm going to try this year. Ranunculus is a high dollar item. Uh, but I want to be able to easily turn over that area. So because I have so much going on this year with the building renovation, I think direct sewing, all of that will just be easy this year. All right, moving on to another growing space. I'll throw this back up on the screen. On the right, you can see I have a couple of purple planting areas. The top one says snapdragons and the bottom one is campanula. Snapdragons first. These are all ones that I have currently started in soil blocks. And these are all 
uh, Potomac and Maryland greenhouse varieties. So I foresee these growing earlier in the spring and growing the entire growing season. I plan to harvest off of these the entire growing season. So those will be in there the whole time. Below those is Campanula. This is the Campanula that I planted last fall and it is very green right now in the greenhouse. I also plan to leave this Campanula in to see how many stems that I can harvest off of it. Campanula, from what I am read, you can harvest uh, one first stem and turn over that area, or you can let it branch out and get possibly eight to 10 stems per plant. I'm gonna let this one branch out and see how many stems per plant I can get. Now let's go to the other side of the hoop house. I'll throw this back up on the screen again. Uh, the top yellow planting area is a mix of things that are already in the ground. There's some ranunculus coming up from last year. I'm gonna see what that does. There's some self-sown bupleurum that is coming up. I'm also gonna wait and see what that does and let those grow. Then I have some purple campanula that I planted last fall. My plan for that is to maybe just harvest that and then turn that over. Uh, I have so many other purple things in the garden um, that I really would like to use that space for summer crops. So I'm thinking I'm gonna harvest out those ranunculus, the bupleurum, and that purple campanula. Then I'm gonna be turning this space over to another patch of snapdragons that I'm going to start, I don't know yet when, <laughs> I'll have to figure that out. Uh, I'm not going to pinch those snapdragons. I'm going to let those grow so I can harvest those quicker. From there, they will probably branch on and I may or may not get another harvest. Um, snapdragons are a cool season crop, so I could get a really late in the season harvest maybe, we'll see. I also want to grow some zinnias in that patch. Um, you know, you, everyone sees Erin from Florette growing zinnias in her hoop houses, so I figure why not? And I wanna grow all the zinnias this year. I wanna grow as many zinnias as I possibly can. I have Benary's Giants, I have the Queen Lime zinnias, I have Don Creek zinnias that I ordered last year, and then of course I have all my Florette zinnias. I think I ordered five varieties. So uh, I wanna try to plant maybe some of those specialty zinnias in here. They'll be growing outside, but I'll probably want more. So I wanna try and grow some of those in here also. Uh, those I will not direct sow. Those I will start inside in, in soil blocks and transplant out. Um, so that space, um, that is the succession plan for that. Now, I'll throw this up on the screen one more time. You can see the bottom area is, blur, is blue. That says Florette Celosia, uh, or Celosia, however you pronounce it. Um, that current uh, exact planting area is Feverfew. And last year in that area, I planted a fever few that I got from GOC that I thought was the magic single. Um, it is a little bit different of a variety and I don't care for it as much. Um, it is a single white petal around the edge with a yellow center, but the white petals aren't as full and there's a little space between them. Um, I like the magic single that I got from Johnny's better. So I'm planning to rip all of this out and I would like to plant just the Florette Celosia in this spot. Um, my outside planting area that's going to be Celosia, I want to do uh, all the Selway series there and the Flamingo Feather. In here, I would like to plant the two varieties of Florette Celosia that I got. And I think I can plant that early and that should grow the whole season. So that's not going to be turned over. That will be an established patch um, as well, just like the snaps and the white campanula. So this year I will have um, three little areas, uh, or I should say, I should have one and a half beds in the hoop house that will be all season, and I will have one and a half beds that will be turned over for two plantings. It's all an experiment, it's all a learning game, but I'm hoping that is what works. Uh, now last year, if you remember, I grew dahlias in my hoop house. They worked just fine, uh, but the dahlia plants that I had outside were fuller and had more blooms. So I'm going to grow all of my dahlias outside this year. Um, the dahlias that I grew in the hoop house last year didn't have as much bug pressure, but I think it's worth it to grow them outside and have more blooms. So uh, that will be a big change in the hoop house this year. 
oh, I for, and now and I'm as I'm looking at this, I just realized I did not uh, leave a space for my stock. I can't believe I did that. So I'm planning as I'm talking to you guys. Uh, I think that that Celosia area will be a double planting. I think I'll put the stock there when the stock is done because we all know that is a very er cool season crop, early bloomer. I'll harvest that out. I'll have established um, Celosia plants that I can just pop in there, maybe not pinch them, grow them as a single stem, um, but Celosia will definitely go all the way till frost. So anyway, I'm gonna have to make that edit on my screen, stock. All right. <laughs> I can't believe I just did that, you guys. Some of you are probably thinking I'm really unorganized. I swear that I thought I had this all planned out. Okay, so stock is added. I have so many varieties of stock that I am planting this year. Also, one of you guys sent me a seed packet of Quartet Rainbow Stock. Thank you so much. Um, I might need to find a spot for that outside because that will be a branching all-season bloomer. I need to make a note of that as well. I definitely will be able to find a spot for that out in my in-ground planting. You know, you do all this planting and then things always change or you forget something. So I'm sure this is totally normal for you guys. But um, anyway, that is my plan for the 2024 hoop house. If you guys missed the in-ground planting video, I will link it at the end of this video. Uh, but I hope this was helpful for you guys. And if you have any questions, comment down below because I do try to answer any questions as well. So anyway, stay tuned for a lot more this entire growing season. Uh, I have so many seeds to start and I'm gonna be sharing that with you guys along the way and giving you updates on everything. And of course, when I plant things out and the building renovation, lots going on. So I'll share everything with you guys, but uh, hope you're having a great winter and hope you're having a great start to your seed starting and stay tuned for a lot. We'll see you soon.